Hey everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. This is Kana, you're in my corner, and I have another special guest on today. Today is an awesome day of explosion, and I would like to thank you so much for being on the show. Edie Merman is awesome, and she's here with us today. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I, I must say, I, I have to thank you for coming on. We have a lot of uh, Digimon fans on, on the site. Oh, okay. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> now, I, I'm, I hope you don't mind if uh, we jump into that uh, with Digimon. That was sort of, uh, would you say that's a, that was a fun show to do? Yeah. we. You know, it, it's such a, a fun character, the way that it was written. And when you're in the booth and you're alone with basically the mixer and the director, there's no holds barred, so you can pretty much say anything that you want. What they record is another story, <laughs> but it's fun, and um, sometimes we try to improv our way around. And um, yeah, I, I think that was a really fun time. I did it for a little while, and it was good because the character, as those Digimon fans that are out there, you know that the character transforms into another character so it was good to not just have to stay stuck with like one character for like the run of the series so yeah yeah i believe you were a, a little catch and then it transformed into like this big angel <laughs> yeah <laughs> got to him on yeah yeah it was it was it was fun and then you know we sometimes we would just be laughing so hard that we just couldn't get through the take and then we go okay let's do it again okay here we go but it's it's always fun and Anime is always a blast to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, w I would think so because you kind of get to be anything you want to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, that's the, the beauty of being a voice actor. I used to do some on camera, but I settled in pretty much to voiceovers. I mean, whether it's cartoons or commercials or, you know, TV voiceovers or um, you know, whatever it is. But it, it's so you get to wear your blue jeans. You get to, you don't have to put makeup on. You can be, you know, you don't have to be camera present and, and ready in that way. The only thing you need to do is to be savvy, have your voice in good order, um, and to be pretty good with improv. So behind the scenes can be really fun, too. I've actually heard nowadays that people, you know, they're getting their old, old home uh, studios and whatnot now, so they just get in their PJs and they just sit at home yeah. and, and send out audition tapes. Yeah, you know, they, they pour their cup of coffee or, you know, their glass of orange juice, and, and sometimes, you know, you you do a thing which is an ISDN line, which is they, they set it up from a, a distant location and the producers are there and... You could be doing a, a voiceover for, um, you know, rice or or a pasta or wherever, and the um, advertisers are in New York or were there in England or wherever. So if it, if it's if it's in another country, then you usually have to have you have odd times where you have to um, kind of do the ISDN line through. But um, you know, if it's New York, it's it's three hours later, different. So you're up, you're up, sometimes you're up earlier than you would really like to be, but that's where the cup of coffee comes in good and you don't have to put your makeup and wear your PJ. So it's all good. <laughs> and that must have made things easier because you, you have a, a vast experience in the acting industry and, you know, the voiceover industry. That must be interesting to see sort of the technology grow. Yeah, the technology has grown in leaps and bounds since I was doing Digimon, and, you know, and, and even before that I was doing Robotech, and, um, you know, it seems like so, like when the dinosaurs were walking around is when we were doing Robotech, but now everything's pretty savvy, it's just, and back then it wasn't even digital, so it was all on tape, so, um, but now everything is just so so quick and you don't have to wait for things to rewind anymore you know you're just on your pro tools or wherever you're, you're pushing the buttons and you're and you're good to go but um a lot of the work that i do now is um, i have a company and it's called ed's gourmet looping and we do a lot of television shows where i hire the actors and it's a loop group and i don't know if your listeners know what that is 
Um, but what we do is like a show like what I'll be working on tomorrow is a CSI, and that's the CSI Vegas, the original one. And what we do is we hire all the voiceover actors, and they come in. There's usually about eight of us. And we come in in the morning, we go to a studio, and we have up on a big screen, we have um, the show going, and we go cue to cue, and we see what's needed, like if the backgrounds need to be filled in. Um, a lot of people that I hire do know um, forensics, they have an idea. You can, you know, with, with, with Google, with, you know, uh, with being online, you have such access to so many subjects. So. If they need to know about what a CSI does or what kind of instruments they use, what kind of powders, what kind of sculpting clay we need, or sticky tape to pull up, uh, fingerprints, um, any type of forensics, and we did that for Without a Trace. We've done a lot of uh, television shows and feature films, and so that's kind of more of the slant that I've been doing mixed in with some commercials and some video games and some a lot of I do a lot of sound alikes um, you know whether it's uh, Angelina Jolie or Judy Dench or Michelle Pfeiffer whoever they they need um, if I can do it then that I do it so it's really it is really fun and it's more more diverse than just you know basic cartoons or um, you know that's involved too, but it's it's fun. I'm sure your listeners know it's fun to not just do one thing. It's great to just do a bunch of different things and be creative. Yeah, to, to have your uh, hand in a bunch of different pies and whatnot, and it certainly shows that you can be diverse and you have a lot of different talents. Yeah, you know what? It's fun, and I work with a great bunch of people that I hire and that I work with, and they're just all. Um, very capable and pardon me and very imaginative great with improv and it's a it's a wonderful job it's it's really it's a fun job to have and now you explained about uh, the the company that uh, you're you're part of could you get into a little bit more more depth to how the, how you go about you know getting the people and and sort of basically you know being like okay here's the scene you know it, yeah, it sounds yeah. almost like a, a real life version of, of Walla in a way <laughs> yeah really exactly and what we do is um, like here's an example um, I did a movie called Public Enemies with Johnny Depp and he was John Dillinger and so what we needed to do we, we worked on it for two days and we come into the studio so they send me a, uh, a DVD of kind of a, uh, a rough cut of the movie <clears throat> and there's um, there, sometimes there's a little music here a little music there it isn't completely finished with the editing and so I watch it Pardon me, I'm taking a drink of water. Oh, no problem. <laughs> this, is LA. this is L.A. It gets a little bit hard on your voice out here. Um, so I watch it, and then I talk to um, either the editor or the um, ADR supervisor or sometimes the director of what they need and want. And this was a, a period piece, so we needed to have the actors, um, which I cast, I think there were like 22 actors each day, that we did it. We worked on it two or three days, and they wanted different actors for each day. So there, there is a good pool of voiceover actors out here um, to pull from. I do have like a, a core group of people that um, I say can swing every way. They, there are some people that can speak lots of languages. They can do kids that don't sound too cartoony, but they sound real. Um, and they are really good with improv. They can hit sync. And those are like the creme de la creme players, and they work for me all the time. So with Public Enemy, so I, I get the show, I look at it, I see who is right for the casting. Sometimes we have to do sound alikes. Um, sometimes there are actors in the cast that can't make it. The on screen actors can't make it to come in, or the director wants to hear it a different way. So the actors will try to do it where they are. If they can't come in, then I'll have somebody that will sound exactly like the actor, whether you know, it's, whether it's Johnny Depp or 
premiere or whoever it is. We worked on uh, another show called Wanted with Angelina Jolie, so I had to find a lot of people that could do uh, Morgan Freeman, Angelina Jolie, um, you know, you McGregor. There and there are people out there that can really sound identical, and hopefully the viewers. The the point is so that the viewer doesn't can't tell the difference at that point. And sometimes it's just a line or two. Sometimes it's it's more than that. It just depends on if they're available or you know what's needed and wanted. So the um, the ADR supervisor um, also goes through the whole movie and sends me um, by email all of the the cues that are needed for that for the show, and then I go through every cue and I make notes and I say, oh, on on screen left there's a man in a striped shirt with a with a fedora hat and he's walking screen left to right and then a woman walks up to him. So I'll assign that to my actors, and they get up to the podium, and there's a huge screen in front of them, and there's, there are microphones in front of, of the actors to pick up whatever noises we're going to make. And they'll hear a beep, 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 and then on the fourth imaginary beep, they go in and they do their work, whether it's hitting the sink exactly or um, it's something in the background, uh, and this this goes for every cue. It's always on the fourth imaginary beat. And then we just go through the the feature or the television show, whatever it is that's needed and wanted. So we that's do that, a, and, it's, and it's fun. The, no, I think that's actually very interesting because I've never heard that aspect of it. But I, I will say that with in, impressions, I was always under the impression, no pun intended, that um, – <laughs> Uh, you know, that impressions will help sort of get you into the door in, in vocal work. Um, but I also hear that you should have your, your own voice that makes you. Is there one that you think is, is better? You know, it kind of depends on what's fashionable at the moment, which is it's kind of a kooky thing to say. But sometimes, you know, it's like a, a model will have or an actor will have certain – headshots or body shots and it's what the agency or the producers want to see at that particular time. It used to be that headshots were just crisp and clear and then it was they were they had sort of like a ragged border around them and they really didn't want a full headshot. They wanted like a three-quarter body shot. So it, it all depends on what's in style with to get an agent or to start working it used to be where the voices, they wanted to hear a lot of character sound, and now they want people to sound much more natural and much more, you know, it's, it's more of a contemporary sound. So it isn't, so if I was saying to you, hey, how you doing? It wouldn't be, hey, how you doing? It would be, you know, hey, how you doing? And because the acting styles have changed. So everything must follow suit. And... Even cartoon styles have changed. It used to be all like really super charged character sounds. Oh, you know, there still are some, but a lot of it is just like real, you know, Family Guy sound or um, you know how, whatever it is that is the cartoon or the Ricky Gervais show. You see that you know they're just all just sitting around and they're talking, and it's sort of whatever it is in your vocal tone that you bring to the table. Um, but it's also your perception of what the character is. But you can do that without having to create full-blown, over-the-top character sounds because they're not really in style unless you're doing like a, a bitter villain or a, um, you know, like a, oh, the idea, the you know, just a ditzy little baby, you know, then sometimes that's kind of what they're asking for and then you give it. But the, generally now it's it's more like who you are. Although, like, for, with my stuff, with, uh, with me casting for television shows, um, whether, uh, you know, we do uh, CSI, there's a show um, Human Target, we were doing Samantha Who, Friday Night Lights, you know, a lot of television shows, they, they really want you to um, do almost like film acting vocally, which is film acting nowadays is much smaller than it was 
years ago. Years ago, it was kind of over the top and, you know, oh, darling, darling, where have you been? And it's like, <laughs> oh, God, really? And we look at it, we kind of laugh, and we go, God, that just sounds so staged and stilted. But back then, that was the manner of speech. And so they don't want the old-fashioned way of talking anymore. It's, it's what's current, and that's what's in style, whether it's what your photo looks like or what you're going to do vocally or how you're going to create the character. It's just always think small. Marlon Brando said that when you're on camera as an actor, whatever you think you're going to do, hold back 20% extra on top of what you think you're going to do so that your performance gets toned down because the camera picks everything up so, I mean, so explicit, just of the slightest, eye twitch, little movement of your of your mouth or your eyebrow, it's just hugely magnified and the style now is very, very natural and that goes follow suit for the voice too. That's actually really interesting to me because, you know, I, I I don't look at acting as trends, and I don't think a lot of people uh, look at it that way. You know, the, I, I can see the differences between the oh, darling, to, you know, nowadays that that's a big leap, but very subtle things, you know, like uh, that they want more natural voices and things like that. I don't think a lot of people would legitimately notice that. No, I think because we're just we're just there and we're living in it and we're in the moment. We don't. Um, we don't tend to look at it objectively that, oh, that's the style then and this is the style now. We're just we're just being where you just are. And which is actually the best acting you know, for any of the actors that are listening out there, you know, the best tip that I ever got was from an actress that said, just be. So that's being in the moment. You know, don't think about what your next line is, don't think about what you just you know, if you screwed up or whatever, just be. And, you know, that's a great way of looking at life is to, to be in the moment and you don't lose you don't lose the moment because you're there in the present time. And that's the best acting, that's the best way to create it, whether you're writing or you're doing music or vocal work or on screen. I, I think this is, uh, in a way, this kind of hits home for me because uh, when we started uh, this whole radio business, uh, a lot of people heard, like, a squeaky voice I did and, like, you should do it in that voice. I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? You can't please everybody all the time. So the best thing to do is to do what feels truthful to you, you know, in everything. And... I think if you walk that line of, of truth in what you do, you, you really you can't go on. And if somebody doesn't like it, then they don't like it. Then that's okay. It's, it's, it's perfectly okay because there are just way too many people in the world that aren't going to like what you're going to like, but there's going to be a ton that really do. And those are the people that you find that you associate with, that you glom towards, you know, whether it's, you know, it's acting or it's, it's um you know, online radio, whatever it is, you, you know, like minds seem to um, to stick together. And I think that's a great perspective. And I am curious, do you have any projects that recently came out or that you're working on you can promote and talk about? Um, well, we're we're just kind of finishing up our season right now. The um, we do mostly um, television shows, so Smallville just wrapped. Um, Human Target just wrapped, CSI just wrapped. We were just doing a show called um, We Did In Plain Sight. We were doing, you know, these are shows that they, they're all like they wind, they're winding down or they or they're they're done. So now we're going to have a little a little bit of time off. This is my start of my summer vacation after tomorrow, which is the last CSI for the. For this season, but we we were doing pilots, and we are hoping for some pickups. And we did a, a show called Reagan's Law, which is a new um, television show. Hopefully, it's a pilot that is um, with Tom Selleck to bring him back to TV for series work. And then there was another show that we worked on called The Damn Thorps, which is um, uh, produced by Amy Sherman Palladino. I don't know if you're familiar with the Gilmore Girls. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> Okay, so it was that show, and it's um, 
it's really a, a wonderful, it's a family kind of show. It would be on the CW. So when all what's called the, um, they're, they're up front and uh, all of the, the networks come in and they, they listen to all of the pilots and, and then they start making their schedules and then we'll all know like what comes back for next season, um, probably in the next, in the next few weeks or so. And in the meantime, I'll just enjoy um, a couple of months off. But then we always hit the pavement running right around the end of, uh, of August. I also do some uh, video games, and um, I do um, CSI, the video game CSI. I do Mark Halkenberger's um, work, uh, voice for that. Um, and everybody does something. It's, it's really fun, and you get to have, I don't know if anybody, any of your listeners um, have purchased the CSI video games. I hope you have. <laughs> but they're fun because you have so many different endings that you can do, and you get to solve mysteries. And um, So that's kind of my, my, summer, my, my little summer plans, and then we'll, we'll just really start up in the end of August, and we'll start with all of our television shows. And my company's called Edie's Gourmet Looping. And um, and it's fun. And I've been doing the the looping. I've been in business for about 20 years, so it's it's pretty old hat for me. And but it's fun. And and every what's great is it's it's not like you know going to an office and you sit down and you punch the clock and you walk out. It's every day is kooky and crazy and um, improv-y and you know actors and comedians are are, are kooky. In a good way. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. And I'll enjoy my vacation, but I always love coming back to work. What, what I like is that you you actually, you know, had, had a lot to, to promote. You know, I, I hear so often, I can't talk about it. And I'm like, dang. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? I, uh, no. Some, you know, there are some movies that we've worked on where they say, please don't, you know, you have to sign an agreement, don't say anything or blah, 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 you know, and they're, they're just touchy. They've, they've had bad experiences before, but with the television shows, they, they really don't, they, most of the time they do, 99%, they, they don't care, you know, um, because it's, it's going to be out so, so soon anyway. So for them, you know, we work on a movie, sometimes it's not out for, a, you know, like eight months or nine months a year. You work on a television show, the next week it's out. So the, the turnaround time is, is much quicker. Well, it's kind of funny. It seems like on-camera projects you can talk about and you can promote, but it seems like with a lot of anime and then with high-end video games, if you say a word, you're done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. You know, And, again, that is what's, what's ever, like, happening in, in, in fashion. You know, sometimes it was just the opposite. Well, you know, don't talk about it if it's this, or you could talk about it if it's that. So... I kind of look, take everything with a grain of salt, and somebody will give me like a direction of something. And I go, oh, okay, and then you just kind of, kind of go with it. You know, it's sort of an axiom of life. You just have to really go with with your gut feeling, because if you don't go with your gut feeling, what's right, then it'll always be a bad uh, approximation or imitation, and it won't be direct from the source, which comes from your own self. So hopefully your listeners know that the the best judge of what is right is is you. And, you know, those are very wise words for our listeners to think about. And I think our listeners would be interested to know if there's any w where or any place they can follow any upcoming projects you have. Like, do you do the social media thing or you're not quite into that? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm on uh, Facebook and... Um, and I, you know, it's kind of it, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because um, sometimes there are people that kind of get a little kooky with wanting to know everything about you. So the great thing to me about Facebook is that I can, you know, as we know, you can, ex, you know, ex agree or you know say bye bye. <laughs> you can be my friend or you can't be my friend. So I I kind of do that. I had started to Twitter, but. You know, I'm in the studio so, so much, and I'd be like, oh, I'm working here, and, you know, uh, and, and uh, you know, 
Taylor Peterson just walked in and all, you know, and I just, it just gets to be like so much. I, I'm, I'm looking at a screen so much. I'm dealing with stuff tactily all the time. I'm directing my actors all the time that sometimes it's great to just have a little downtime. Although I am addicted to like, my MacBook Pro, and I am I'm like I'm <laughs> online all the time, and I, I I do check my Facebook all the time. So people want to find me, they can find me on Facebook, and um, I'll say yay or nay. But you know, um, and then there's the my uh, my company, which is Edie's Gourmet Looping. So they can also get a they can get a hold of me at my um, at my company Looping, which is esmprods at gmail.com if they really want to get a hold of me for for work or advice or just to have a little chat online. And it's Wonderful. ES, it's esmprods at gmail.com. So um, thank you so much. This was so much fun. I hope you had a good time. Oh, definitely. I did, and I, I loved a lot of your answers. But I was wondering before we let you go if you'd uh-huh. like to participate in a 91.8 The Fan Tradition. What's that? Everybody who comes on, whether they're a voice actor or not, we ask if they could do a bump for us or say a line for us. Oh, sure, sure. Awesome. And we do this live on air, so in in case you have any bloopers. (laughs) (laughs) What do you want me to say? We were just wondering if you could say, my name is, I do this, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. 91.8 The Fan. Okay, sure. Whenever you're ready. Okay. My name is Edie Merman, and I do voiceovers, and I have a company, Edie's Gourmet Looping, and you're listening to 91.8 The Fan. That was perfect. <laughs> and, you, and you have a very clear phone, so there was no muffling. <laughs> Yay! I know. I, I, I thought, oh, I can't do the speaker phone, so it's better to just, uh, I thought, you know what, my, sometimes the cell phone in the area that I live, not so much, so this is the in the cordless song. Well, I would like to say thank you so much for joining the show. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, and thanks for some great questions. Oh, awesome. And for everybody out there who missed any of this interview, shame on you, but it will be up on the site in the next few days. So keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan, everything you want.